Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also, follow me on Instagram at the same profile name so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. We got Greenleaf Season 5, Episode 5, entitled The Fifth day yet and another amazing episode to all of my newbies i give a recap with photos and then i give my review and discussion questions at the end no need to dig around i have all of the minute marks in the comments i have the recap coming up next It's the last service at home before Calvary is demolished. And Grace tries to get Sophia out of bed, but she's completely exhausted. She's claiming that she was texting some girls all night and she needed to get her rest, but she'll make it down. And Grace says, you know how important this is. You know that your grandma wants to have this service and family needs to be there. And after she agrees, Sophia's phone is going crazy with alerts. Carissa still wants to know if Jacob will tell Zora the entire truths behind their divorce. And it's obvious that she's embarrassed about her parts and infidelity. And Jacob insists that despite his mother's advice that it's time to just lay the cards out on the table, inform their children about what's going on, and move forward. The entire family is ready for service and Charity leads everyone in song as they sing and the energy is bittersweet but it's refreshing to see Corinne in the room as well. Lady May leads the lesson and acknowledges AJ's presence letting him know that I'm happy that you're here. I'm so happy that you're with us because you are family and we want you to be here and that they need to count their blessings and everyone should be happy and Carissa wants to know what they should be happy about and Lady May confirms that you need to celebrate life anew and being aware of that newness and as she's saying that she's looking over her shoulder looking at Jay Jacob as to insinuate not to go forward with the divorce. Bishop takes note of the annoyance of turning backward, looking over her shoulder, and he just brushes it off. And Lady May tries to continue, but Carissa's Debbie Downer energy puts a gray Hindu on the room. And Bishop says, hey, I know that we're going through a lot of stuff, and there may, may be a lot of stuff on your mind, but I've always known you to have a certain amount of poise. So can you please just kind of knock it out? Lady May says, well, since no one has any announcements or anything else to say, let's go ahead and dismiss. So they dismiss for breakfast. Sophia tells Zora that she's just really concerned about the photographs and it seems to be haunting her. And Zora is confused because she's like, didn't Dante say that he deleted them all? And she's like, well, yeah, I was under the impression, but a friend of his from Hampton screenshot all the photos and now he's sharing all of the photos. And it's even making Sophia question if she wants to go back to school. Corinne gives an update to Charity that her mom says that an H&H &H service feels like a wheelchair going downhill and judy is singing the believe song but we also know that they have two more days before the big demolition noah is amazed by how much food there is and grace says that her mom wanted to go all out and wanted it to feel like a celebration he also reminisces when him and grace did that little thing thing in church when grace lost her virginity you know he trying to get that old thing back up oh. But she tells him, hey, we just got through with service and having the word of God. Let's not talk about that just now. Lady May gets ready to hit the road to go see Tara and Bishop insists on him taking her himself. Although Lady May tells him not to worry as she has one thing on her mind, not letting Tara take that house. And also by her body language, anybody wanted to inflict any harm on her, that it would be bad for them. And she tells Bishop, pray for Tara. Bishop notices that AJ isn't eating and AJ says, no, I'm just waiting on the crowd to die down. And as they're having a brief discussion, they witness Carissa and Jacob argue back and forth. And Bishop says all of this goodness and they still find something to be angry about. And AJ says, you know, something interesting that the doctor said was some people like putting things together and some people like taking things apart. They don't mean ill will, but they just want to tear things apart 
to see how they all work. And Bishop is moved to talk to him and ask to speak with him in private. And he warns him, hey, I'm not trying to preach to you. I just want to talk to you. We witness Tara do her good work and she's talking to individuals saying eat everything that you'd like as much as you need. Make sure to come back and get more. And as she's talking to those in need, we see Lady May is looking in her car from afar observing everything. She looked the same way she did in A Thin Line Between Love and Hate when she was in the car. Oh, look, mama's boy. I'm sorry, I just had to take note of that. After Lady May enters the building, she asks Tara, haven't you tried to do something more ambitious? Like instead of just feeding 10 to 30 people or children, how about thousands? And Tara says that she does what she can. And as long as she's feeding and helping those in need, that's her ministry. And Tara admits that she may not have the full claim over the house. But if there's anything legally to give her a piece of that, she wants in because initially, the house was left to her dad she reminds lady may of how much good that that property could provide shelter for people in poverty a safe haven for those that are coming out of abusive environments and much more and lady may says wow like i asked god for a new beginning and he has a wonderful sense of humor she tells tara you're doing great work here you're really doing great work Bishop and AJ are still having God talk and having their moment. And he says, you know, do you know anything about cars? You know, when I was a kid, the only thing that I wanted was this 64 Pontiac GTO. And in this box is this car, pieces of it. And for six months straight, his dad kept telling him to pray for it. And he woke up one morning only to find find that he had the car, but it was in thousands of pieces. And his father wanted him to learn faith that takes work. And he says, I never cracked this board open to even look inside because I dreaded the work that was going to go behind this. But you know, if you help me put this car together, the car is yours. What do you say? And AJ is honored and can't even wait to get started. Grace and Noah catch up on the matters concerning the church demolition and Grace feels that some way somehow they can stop this process if they have the right information. And Noah says that AJ is 24 and I don't even feel like a dad. And Grace says, you know, I can understand, you know, we're both new at this. But Noah, he realizes that she's tired. And Grace says, yeah, I'm tired because I really haven't had sleep in weeks with everything that's happening with AJ and all of my family's situations. And Noah tells her, you know what? Lay your head on my pillow. And he offers some comfort and wants her to get some rest. So she lays her head in his lap and he caresses her hair. Don't go, don't do it, Grace. Don't do it, girl. Keep them, keep them knees crossed. But he asks Grace, you know, why is it that Mrs. Davis left it to Daryl in the first place and Grace says I don't know that's the thing nobody knows nobody knows anything Corinne reports to Charity that Judy and Phil are rubbing it in people's faces that the church is being torn down soon they are taking selfies and they're even allowing the wrecking ball trucks to go ahead and park close to the property Zora tells Sophia that you shouldn't sweat the small stuff and those are just photos and maybe you should just reconsider and just go back to school and let that just go under the rug deal with the drama another way Charity needs Zora and Sophia to watch her son while she makes a quick important phone call but as she does that Sophia is reluctant because of her situation then after that Jacob and Carissa call Zora so they can speak with her alone leaving Sophia and the child alone so it makes her feel kind of awkward but they need her to help out Charity gives a call to yourself saying that, hey, I know that your time is precious, but I really need to talk to you. Phil and I are over with. Please give me a moment to speak with you. He agrees, but tells her that she only has two minutes to speak.
Ash Bishop continues the conversation with AJ, letting him know that you can talk to me any and every time. Jesus is real. Please, you know, don't feel uncomfortable in this house. As he's speaking, Lady May enters the household. And when she enters the house, you can tell that is something bothering her. Bishop wants to know how did the meeting go with Tara and she tells him what I learned is that this house belongs to Tara and he's like well why what are you talking about and she says because Jesus said so and Bishop says well I didn't get any message on that and how do you know that I'm waiting on a message from God too I didn't hear that part we are finally in the moment where Jacob and Carissa unfortunately have to break the news to Zora that they are getting a divorce. And you could tell that there's hurt in her eyes. We're starting to see the tears form. And she also learns that her mother has been unfaithful as well. Zora is too hurt and she leaves the room. Carissa pleads with Jacob to try to make things work, to try to make things right. And she doesn't want her to hurt her children. But Jacob gives her no response so it seems as if he settled in his decision. Grace wakes up from her nap and Noah says that when he lived back in the cabin he came across a journal that the caretaker left that he used as a record holder concerning anything that he needed to do or things that he did that day that he trimmed the trees etc but he also had plans and sketches of what he would do with the grounds as if he thought it was going to be left to him after mrs davis's death and in there he would also say comments like that negro came in or that negro kept coming in and what if that negro was daryl bishop needs to talk to grace concerning what lady may says said and he's telling her that she's going on and on about how tara deserves the house and that how we should give him the house and maybe if we offer some type of money up that she'll get off of this topic and grace says well how much do you need and bishop says well how much do you have it's sad to see Zora completely distraught and it's evident that she can't contain herself. She's conflicted with not only sadness but anger. Charity gives Yusef an update about her and Phil and what's been happening and that she needs his help. She wants to know what did Edenville Lending have to do with his ex-wife? What did it have to do with her? What did, what did she have to do? Anything, any information. And of course that upsets him. AJ learns that Sophia's situation um is pretty terrible about the pictures and stuff stuff like that he reminds her to just chuck things under the rug and take control of the situation so he tries to encourage her to leave and find her own way Noah and AJ hit the road and go back home Grace checks up with Zora and learns that Carissa and Jacob are getting a divorce, but before she enters the room, it's very obvious that she has a mission. Grace tells her that she's there if she needs to talk, but also needs to know where the journals and paperwork was hidden in the cabin. And Zora lets her know that the location is under the bed. All of the paperwork and everything that you need will be under there. Grace finds old ledgers and paperwork and she looks through it and it seems to be hand drafts of not only the house, but the land. Lady May pleads with Bishop that they can't use Gigi's money and that was given to her from her foundation of lies. Lady May told lies for many years and if we accept that money from Gigi, our new beginning is is still going and lagging with those memories we she wants to start a new beginning as fresh everything paid for it's new the church is new and bishop isn't having it he's insisting that grace wants to give them the money that this is maybe what they need to move forward charity in, interrupts their debate and says look i'm sorry i know that you guys are busy but we've got to see the church one last time not to say goodbye but to say thank you the family heads up to the church, thanks to Charity's extra key, and Bishop tells the family that we've got to allow this chapter to close in our lives. We've got to let this tomb close, and we've got to have faith for bigger and better things to come. And he even tells Lady May that if you want to give Tara the house, then do so. And Lady May says if he wants to do so, implying that if that's what God wants them to do. 
Lady May and Bishop head over to talk to Tara and have small talk about what's going to happen in the future. And Lady May tells Bishop that they're taking the right steps, making a new way, starting over. God will provide and things will take time. And as they're talking, they knock on the door and the door opens and we see surprisingly that it is Rochelle and Rochelle says see I told you if we wait long enough the green leaves would show up they are always lagging around and not only is Bishop confused but they turn around to Tara in dismay of pure confusion and anger of why they will be talking to her and that is the end of the episode was definitely a filler episode. Now, when I say filler, I don't mean that as a bad thing or something just to take the space of just filling in stuff. No, this is an episode that will prepare us for this big crescendo. Now, in the last review, I did say that I felt that Yusef had that missing key to give them the documentation and maybe some legal things that they need to move forward. And it seems like he's pushing through and he's a little bit more open now that that charity has said hey I'm done with Phil this is the deal will you help us so it's really refreshing to see that he might go ahead and bite the bullet on his beliefs and things that have happened in the past in order to help the green leaves it was also a big shocker when we saw Rochelle because we wondered where she went Tasha was under the impression that she made it to Mexico or wherever she was trying to go but she has stayed under the radar are like many of us have predicted because she's a smart mastermind she's 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 playing chess not checkers so I look forward to learning what Rochelle has in mind because Tara when she opened the door she seemed disappointed to see the green leaves and she might be that sibling in movies and series that have those overbearing siblings and telling them hey what's the deal she probably can't stand on her own two feet she's probably very timid and standing up for herself because she's this very helpful person but maybe Rochelle and Basie are those siblings that push her around to get what they want because they're doing well they have the gift of the gab to get what they want and to go where they want but if you see that sister isn't so lucky there is some meaning behind that and there's a story behind that with Sophia we're seeing that she's understanding that her circumstances can't continue to hold back how she feels it even has her reluctant to babysit her own family but that's understandable I mean you have learned that you can't have children so why be around children constantly reminding you of what can't happen many people have guessed that maybe she's pregnant and I'm like well you know biology she got rid of her ovaries highly unlikely that she can get pregnant so I don't know why people are saying that I'm glad that they kind of wrote it in that hey I'm fatigued because I've been looking at text messages all day I've been looking at the internet all day because she's been bothered about those photos that have haunted her so if she's pregnant the writing is completely out of the window but hey it's soap opera slash drama so there's no telling what they may write in now Zora I really hope she doesn't go on the deep end and go back and she goes back to those old behaviors and using drugs and getting high and falling to the arms of somebody that can show her that love looking for love in all the wrong places I hope that this doesn't tear her down and thinking why should I even care about having a healthy relationship and my parents don't even have a healthy relationship. It was very hurtful to see Carissa cry and plead with her own husband. But when a woman's fed up, I guess she's fed up, he's fed up. It doesn't look like he's coming too. But as I said in the last video, I really hope that they can get past all that hope and get back together. Because I really don't see them with anybody else. I think they're just tired of each other's drama. But hey, if they move on... Okay, Sarai, Sarai. I find it very odd that Noah is just now having these epiphanies about journals and documents that he looked at when he was in the cabin. It's like, really, Noah, you could have saved us about two seasons.
seasons if you would have remembered this a little earlier but hey it is what it is writings change things change and i thought it was also odd that you have these documents of this ledger in a box that's been under a bed it's not in this in this cedar crest hidden room that's underground it's just under a bed i thought that was kind of yeah they could have built up a little bit more suspense of her looking for it she's like oh zora you know those documents hey where are they she's like ah oh, yes yeah, under the bed Ooh, <laughs> straight to the point um i also found it interesting how grace went in with the intention of asking about the documentation and she learns that carissa and jacob are having a divorce but it's kind of like oh i'm sorry but uh have you seen those documents <laughs> So I hope that didn't make Zora feel like nobody cares for her because Grace did continue to say, I'm here if you need me. I'm here if you need me. But Zora could figure out that she was there specifically for something else. So I hope that really didn't hurt her feelings. Also, Lady, Lady May has really been missing the mark on what God is telling her. You know, we should do this. We should do that. It's kind of like pump the brakes, Lady May. I'm, I'm kind of scared. Were you saying all of that earlier because you were hungry? I mean, you did just kind of come off a fast a few days ago. You, may, you might want to, you know, eat a little bit more solid foods before you just go up and give stuff away. I mean, I did find it touching that Tara said that she would do so much to help so many people because I'm that way. I'm thinking that if I won the lottery, the first thing that I would do is I'm thinking about who can I help and what can I change? I'm not even thinking about how this can help me. I'm thinking about helping other people. But key, but I just want that keynote. Just 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 think about that. How her other siblings are well, but she's not. Now I know that's her mission. She feels like that's her calling. If she needs to be in the gutter of being around certain people and being in the hood because that's where a lot of people need help and being in the poverty stricken areas but it doesn't seem like she has anything to herself and I found that very interesting and I think Rochelle and Basie are those overbearing half siblings that pull from her and draw from her because she's a giving person so it's not going to surprise me that they take advantage of that sister and I don't think Basie is dead I think he's alive and well he's just staying under the radar whenever you have the FBI IRS and those those people on your tail I would have left and stayed low as well and it's it's kind of bad but I think Tasha has an idea or either she's just boo boo the fool and just taking the information and running with it that some random cop just called her and said hey your husband you know is dead and she's like okay <laughs> i thought it was beautiful of uh, the moment shared between bishop and aj how awesome was that bishop turned down those walls and said non-verbally that yes i'm this person but i don't want you to feel like you can't come talk to me he automatically pulled him in with those welcoming arms and that was beautiful to see it was great great to see aj coming around the family more and that takes a lot because he's really hurt his mother and father really did hurt him so i really think that showing that he's that type of person to say let me try this over again he's been through so much great writing on that part and lynn whitfield and everybody but you know the person who really stuck out to me the most in season four and season five was of course lynn whitfield she is absolutely phenomenal in her acting do you really think that tara has the rights to the house i mean boo i mean yeah your father died but Y'all didn't make the cut on the final will, so why do we owe you anything? I, I don't get that. I mean, if they give her that cabin, uh, you know, the other side of the house, that's cool. Uh, but in the court of law, Tara, I mean... <laughs> I really hope that Sophia takes AJ's advice and goes back to school. Girl, they just tie tie picks. It's okay. You have seen them once. You have seen them twice. Girl, I mean, tie ties are tie ties. Girl, go on back to school. Don't even worry about that. Next time, don't have your face in the picture. Charity is trying any and everything to help out. I mean, I still don't like her, but girl, if you gonna help them say the church or something like that, go on and do it. <laughs> now, Corinne, y'all know dang gone well, she could have cared less about them having that church at the house. She just wanted, you know how mama said, Corinne, girl, go ahead and go to that service at the house. Tell me what it, what it looking like. Girl, they sad, they struggling. Girl, tell me what they preached about up in there and then, then, then come back to the house and I'll tell you what they doing over here in H&H. &H. <laughs> Let me know what you think. 
I cannot wait to read your comments below. You guys have the most amazing comments. I love how a lot of you debate back and forth about what y'all think, how the season's going to end. I'm really confused because if it goes to 10 episodes, wow, they have a lot to rush through with only five more left. Even if they go to 13, that's still rushing it to wrap everything up and to give us all of the answers that we need. Let me know what you think. Will they get the church back? Are they just saying whatever? Just go ahead and demolish it. We're going to start over. What do you think? I can't wait to see you guys next week. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram. I love you guys. Be safe. Do not undermine COVID-19. It's very serious. Be careful. Be precautious, but not fearful. Until next time, I love you guys. Bye.